to those who are in attendance. Thank you for coming. We will go ahead and start our regular meeting with uh, Dr. Thomason roll call. President Whitener, please let the record show that all four members are present tonight. Thank you. 3.0 is our moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I will go ahead and motion that we approve tonight's agenda. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5.0 is the opportunity to address the governing board. I request to speak to the governing board. Arizona Revised Statutes 38 431.01.h. We value input from constituents. This is the time has been set aside for anyone from the audience who wishes to address the board. Please remember this is non appropriate venue to evaluate, discuss, or criticize district personnel. Policy KEB provides a process for complaints about personnel. Speakers should be aware about false statements about individual. So it may result in civil liability. Members of the board may not, may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Um, if you would wish to address the board, Ms. Walker has some forms over here. At this time, I just have one, Joe Gusick. Where is your orange? I will explain. Okay. Madam President, fellow board members, all Higley staff, parents, students, my name is Joe Gusick and I'm your lovable, slightly annoying American citizen, as I addressed Governor Ducey last week at Classrooms First. I will quickly tell you why I forgot to wear my orange shirt, because I actually went to my daughter's recital before this and didn't think I would have enough time to come down and visit with you. But I did, and I felt it was important before the new year starts that I share this with you. As I emailed you a few months back about the difference between what happened from 2006 to 2014, I want the public to understand our legislators, when they see the data, they're looking at, at the very aggregate number. They're not analyzing the information, and I feel they're doing a disservice, not just to districts, but to charters as well. <clears throat> it is very important that they understand the data just as well as anybody else does, because they're making massive decisions. As I will share with the public now, if I go from, what I did is I took the numbers, took the year 2006, and I wiped out all the highs and lows from uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, and then took 14. Charter schools revenue per student increased by 11.93%. Districts increased by 1.25%. So we can really actually start to see the real story. We always have to be very vigilant and aware of the information. The reason why I came down to you tonight was once again to encourage you to, to lean into your state elected officials. If it be the three that are directly that you've elected or all 90 plus the one plus the other one, and even if you have to reach out to the, to the two boards of education, I truly believe we have to do a better job of analyzing the data. It is not in the best interest of our students. It's not in the best interest of the state. It is definitely not in the best interest of the taxpayer. Because at the end of the day, economies don't grow by humans. They don't grow by pieces of metal and stuff and all that kind of stuff. Where they grow is from ideas. And we know where those fresh ideas always come from. 
Majority of the time, they come from our youth because we inspired them. We set a high standard, and we stuck to it, and they lived up to it, and they kept pushing our country forward. So the last comment I want to make to you is I thank you for not backing down when you got your AZ merit scores. I know they weren't what everybody wanted or wished to have. But you know something? As I shared with Governor Ducey, I believe in the good, the bad, and the ugly. We should always recognize the good, but there's bad and there's ugly. And we need to address those and fix those. There's nothing wrong with ever finding out where you are today. So once again, thank you for serving. Have a great winter break. And please, please encourage your state elected officials to do better. Thank you. Thank you. The board just had a slight opportunity to look at our board self-evaluation. And, and that is one of our goals. And it's right here. And I actually circled it before you came. And I knew what you were talking about. Board members get to know their local legislators and invite them into the district and ensures impact of major legislative actions is reported to the public. A part of our promotion of public welfare on behalf of the students. So thank you for that friendly reminder. Are there any others who wish to address the board? Thank you, 6.0. This is usually the highlight of our evenings. Uh, we have a superintendent's report and then followed by with some awards and recognitions. Thank you, President Whitener. At this time, I would like um, to introduce Sheila Sorensen, who's going to take us through our Point of Pride monthly awards. President Whitener, members of the board, we're actually going to start off with where we left off at the last meeting. We had um, the business office had their point of pride, and that employee was not able to make that meeting. So he's here this evening. I'd like for Shannon Deuce to introduce the point of pride from the business office. And we'll follow with Chaparral, Ms. Wolf, Ms. Hansen, and then after that with HTA with Ms. Bake and Ms. Garland. Hopefully everyone can hear me. I'm usually the one that causes trouble when it comes to microphones. So um, I wanted to introduce, thank you, um, Jefferson Clark. He is our warehouse supervisor, and he's usually that department that gets forgotten. So when I first started with Higley, I made sure that that wasn't going to happen anymore. And as I've gotten to know him, um, I've learned that um, he is the go-to person. So if, if something, you have some questions or um, what happened before and what's, you know, where should we kind of go, he's always the one that kind of has a unique um, input. So um, some of the things I've learned since uh, starting is he is um, going back to school to obtain a certificate in um, professional human resources or PHR. Um, I'm always encouraged and, and uh, inspired by people who go back and try and uh, fulfill their dreams. So I commend you. Um, he always takes on projects that others have overlooked and analyzes for the potential for efficiency or possibility of cost savings, which of course is finance's best friend, right? So um, he always steps up and gets things done with very, very limited resources and is one of my best multitaskers. Um, and he's a wonderful role model to not only my department, but to the entire district. Um, one coworker had actually described him as always approachable, patient, courteous when helping me understand the district's processes, a positive team player, and always looking out for the best interest of the district. So he's a true honor to have on my, on my team. So thank you. Jefferson, do you have family here with you this evening? Would you introduce them?
Okay, chaperone. So good evening, President Whitener, members of the board, Dr. Thomason, our cabinet, and also um, our wonderful community out there. So my name is Liz Wolf. I'm the principal of Chaparral, and Ms. Hansen is our assistant principal, and we have the honor of um, recognizing four members of our team this evening as well. And we're very excited that not only are those four team members here, but we also probably have close to 20 teachers here as well who are excited to come support uh, the four of them. So the first person we're going to talk to uh, talk about a little bit tonight is Miss Thompson. Crystal Thompson, could you come on up here? Miss Thompson is a volunteer on our campus. She is a first grader. She also has a kindergartner on our campus. And Crystal is a member of our PTO. Um, part of the PTO's bylaws are that if you are a board member on the PTO, that you need to take um, on ownership of one particular large event at the school. Last Tuesday, we had a PTO meeting. And I think Crystal volunteered for her third large event of the year to take on um, as a PTO board member. So she's definitely that go-to person. Um, she's just that bright, shining, smiling face on campus. She would assist us with anything that we needed. But the other piece that she does, which is really very special, is we have something called um, Kindergarten Academy. And this is a, a group of six people who assist um, our kindergarten team, those five teachers. And they volunteer once a week. Crystal's there for several hours during the day, and she pulls students who need a little bit of extra support in literacy, so reading specifically. And um, you might see Crystal actually on the website recently because I know our PR folks came out and took some pictures of her um, working with our kindergarten babies. But she does a beautiful job. She has wonderful students, and uh, we love having her on our campus. So please help us in congratulating Crystal Thompson on being our volunteer. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing the next uh, award to our kindergarten teacher, Miss Molly Montoya. Molly, come on up. <laughs> Molly is, I will keep this short and sweet. I could go on and on about uh, Miss Montoya, but she is not only a phenomenal teacher. Um, what is so special about Molly is that she is, um, she also plays a key role on our campus for staff morale. Um, she's she's um, just very positive and uh, nurturing not only to students, but our staff. And I know her team just thinks the world of her. Um, we also really appreciate Molly. She serves on our PTO as well, so she is a very positive liaison between the PTO and our, our teachers, our staff. Um, she's also somebody that we have at times intentionally placed students with because Molly is, she's just amazing. She can give those students that might need that little extra TLC. You all know who I, who I may be talking about. I'm sure we all have them. But Molly is that go-to for us. So congratulations, Molly. We're very lucky to have you at Chaparral. Okay, the next person that we are going to be recognizing is our superstar student. She's a super shark uh, on the Chaparral campus. And Danny Richardson is the person that I'm going to be recognizing. Come on up here, Miss. You can stand right by Miss Wolf. Okay. So, Danny, when I went to fourth grade, I. I approached two different groups. I uh, approached um, some fourth grade teachers and then another group that assists and helps our fourth grade team. And I asked them both separately, if you were to pick a student who represented um, Chaparral or the fourth grade in a variety of different ways, who would that be? And separately, amazingly, they picked Danny, both of, both of these two separate groups. When I asked Miss Miles um, to talk a little bit, bit about Danny, she said, oh my goodness, it's hard to narrow it down all the wonderful things about Danny. I'd have to say the attribute that I admire in her the most is her persistence and her hard work. I've never once seen her give up on a difficult task. T 
task. She faces challenges with enthusiasm and an open mind, and Danny's unwavering positive attitude lights up any classroom. She is simply stunning. We knew that she would be sparkly tonight because she has a sparkly personality. She does. You want to show the bottom of your – show them the bottom. She said, look at the bottom of my shoes, Miss Wolf." Uh, and I don't think there's been one day in three years that Danny has not given me a hug. That's just what a sweetheart she is. So please give Danny a round of applause. Okay. Our last award this evening goes to another amazing, very special person, Miss Luz Martinez. Come on up, Luz. Luz is our, yes. <laughs> Luz is our cafeteria manager. Um, she does, come on. <laughs> she looks beautiful tonight. She, is, she again, is amazing. Um, she works very hard at a school of over 900 to keep um, lunches and breakfast going and hot. She has never let a student, staff, or admin go hungry on our campus, which is important. Um, she also really takes pride in her job. If you walk through our cafeteria line, the pr she presents the cafeteria food in a, in a very nice way. The salad bar looks like you would be at a buffet decorated with kale and, and decoration. So she takes a lot of pride in what she does, and we're very thankful for her. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention that makes her very special is she will often um, volunteer on her own time. She came to our fall festival just to assist with our pizza booth, which, you know, to us is definitely going above and beyond. So congratulations, Luz. We think you're amazing. <laughs> We'd also like to thank your families for sharing you with us. So, Crystal, would you introduce your family? Thank you, Molly. I have my daughter, Brianna, who's almost 16 months. And then my my parents, Eddie, Kay, Dora, Don, and my husband, Reno. Uh, I have my daddy. I have my mommy. I have my auntie. And I have uh, my sister and my nana. If you're if you're a chaparral staff member, will you stand up? Anybody who's here? Oh yes, applause for you too. Good evening, President Whitener, members of the board, um, community. My name is Karen Bacon, and I'm the principal of Higley Traditional Academy. <laughs> and we have several people to recognize this evening as well. I want to start off um, with our 
classified staff member, Victor, if you'd come on up. <laughs> Victor's our lead custodian during the day, and this guy, you'd think he lives at the school. He, um, he takes so much pride in everything that he does. He spent the entire summer painting every one of our 30 classrooms. All the edging. He went through hundreds of yards of blue tape. And... Um, Lots of drop cloths and paint brushes, but he, he literally did not take a day off the entire summer and worked to paint every single one of our classrooms. He also is in the cafeteria making connections with kids every single day. He's our coach for just about every sport there is, every season. He just has a great rapport with our community, our kids. Um, the behavior in the cafeteria is good because of this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we want to thank Victor. Um, and so who did you bring with you tonight? Miss Maita and Enrique. Okay, very good. Wave. Oh, okay. very good. <laughs> okay, um, next is our teacher. I'd like to recognize Miss Barb Cooley. Come on up. Barb teaches third grade at Higley Traditional Academy, and wow, her classroom, I go in there and I could stay in there all day long. It is such a neat community. Um, she makes this special connection with kids that lasts a lifetime, and she's proven it. She's brought several of her students back to visit, um, and she just keeps that lifetime relationship going, and I would... I would bet that there are a number of children in her classes over the years that become a teacher because of her and the influence that she makes. So we want to thank you. And could you let us know who you have tonight? I have my husband, Jim, and my son, Connor, who's in 10th grade at Higley High School, and William, who's in 8th grade at Sossaman. And then I have a husband and wife, mom and dad duo for volunteers. So if you guys could come on up. This is uh, Miss Christine and Mr. Hector Panunery. <clears throat> Christine is on our PTO. She's our treasurer. She is at every single huge event. She's been on the PTO for a number of years, and she keeps coming back. Put a couple of kids through our school. Um, just an amazing family, and there's never no in her vocabulary. Whatever you need, she'll figure it out. She'll work it out for you. And then um, Hector uh, is a photographer, and every time we need some pictures taken at school or any heavy lifting of ba bales of hay at the carnival, um, he's got his truck and trailer ready to go and his camera waiting, so um, he really steps up and helps us in anything that we need. So we want to thank them as well. The children are at home doing homework. <laughs> and then um, last but not least, I'd like to recognize a sixth grader on our campus. So if you come on up. So this is William, William Gerald, and he is just the most amazing kid, and his sixth grade team would agree. They're here. His teachers are here. Um, what an ambassador for our school. So much so. I mean, everybody he talks to, he has a smile on his face, positive attitude. He's the kid that you want to take with you when you do tours of new families because they want to go to school after they visit with him. He moved away last year and decided he missed us so much that he rides his bike two miles each way to our school so that he can, you know, be with his friends and teachers that he loves so much. So we appreciate that. Um, he's been playing soccer since he was four years old, so he's, a, he's going to go to college probably someday on a, sco a soccer scholarship. Um, he volunteers at his church, and he's on our student council representing our sixth grade. 
Um, he has a king size candy bar in his pocket everywhere he goes, and he even has one tonight. <laughs> uh, mom says she. <laughs> A little melted, just a little bit. But mom says she washes all the wrappers and you know, laundry. So, um, just we are we are appreciative of having students like William to represent our school. So we have um, two things. We have some candy, and then. Right there is my father. <laughs> my uh, sister is right there. And my brother is the guy in the back. Uh, my uncle is next to him. My stepdad and my little brother is right there. And behind them is my mother. And then also, if you, um, we have several teachers here at HT, so if you guys would stand to be recognized as well. Thank you. Thank you for being here. At this time, I'd like to introduce Master Sergeant D Danny Altop, who's with our Higley Air Force or our District Air Force Junior ROTC program that represents both of our high schools. And they had a very successful um, meet a couple weekends ago, and I want uh, him to to be able to talk about that. So please congratulate some representatives from our Air Force ROTC program. Can you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Madam President, fellow board members, administration folks, thank you for having me this evening. Again, I'm Senior Master Sergeant Danny Altop, Higley High School Air Force Junior RTC, from the number one Air Force Junior RTC detachment in the state of Arizona. Right. <laughs> On 14 November, our drill team went to the Eagle Talon Drill Competition at Hamilton High School. And ladies and gentlemen, um, there were 14 events. Higley High School ROTC drill team placed either first, second, or third in every single event. All right? Let's go. That being said, folks, we ended up winning the Grand Champion Trophy. All right, so anyone who's ever been to Higley High School into the trophy case that's right there, we own about four or five of those. All right, so again, it's a tradition of success, and we're going to try to keep that tradition. But um, what I have here is uh, some of our fellow leaders on the drill team. We have Cadet Aaron Jensen. He is our drill team commander, a junior, ladies and gentlemen, leading our team to victory already. Next, we have Jordan Howalt. He is our vice drill commander. He's a sophomore at Williamsville High School. All right, so uh, he's also one of our commanders. <laughs> Last and definitely not least, we have Mr. Connor McGarren, who is the commander of our armed regulation drill team. Folks, I've been truly blessed over the last three years being here. Folks, I've got the absolute best cadets um, on, on my team. Uh, they are laser focused. 
They come in ready to go each and every day. All I have to do, point them in the direction and push. And folks, um, starting January is our main drill season. Uh, we'll have five more competitions between now and the end of the school year. My hope, Thunderbird High School is classified as the best drill team in the state of Arizona. My hope this year, I think we're ready. I think we're going to take them down. So and it's because of these guys. So. At this time, I'd like to uh, welcome to the podium uh, Dr. Beverly Hurley from Grand Canyon University and Mr. Ed Boot from Orcutt Winslow. I'm short. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. First of all, uh, President Whitener. Governing Board members and Superintendent Thomason. Uh, having been a 40-year educator and a former superintendent, I really appreciate you. Um, this was my favorite part of the board meeting as well uh, because we deal with so many other things. But I do want to extend thanks on behalf of, of all of us for the work that you do in your unpaid position as a board member. I really appreciate that and I know your community does as well. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I'm Dr. Beverly Hurley. I'm currently the Director of Academic Alliances at Grand Canyon University. And we're here tonight to make a surprise announcement. Um, I would like, I'm joined this evening by Mr. Ed Boot, if he would come on forward. Um, he is with the Ar Orcutt Winslow Architectural Term or Firm, and he'll say a couple words about that. I would also like to thank uh, Jill Olivas for helping us make the arrangements for this this evening. It's not easy to pull off surprises. I would like uh, at this time, Principal Nancy D. Ebb Scott to come forward. <laughs> I know, I know, as you see, they, I love it when they don't know, it's great. Just sure. stand right here. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Canyon University, uh, with a new emphasis in the STEM program, uh, we have a new STEM building, a new engineering program, and are really moving in that direction. Uh, we started a program this year to recognize STEM principles of the month throughout the state of Arizona. When we sent out the call for nominations this uh, fall, we had nominations come in from all over the state, many, many uh, nominations. But your Miss D.F. Scott was selected as the, the STEM Principal of the Month for December. And I'll read the, the letter and you'll understand why for those of you who may not know her. And I won't read the whole thing because it's quite long. I'll just pick out some parts because you've been very patient. Nancy D.F. Scott opened Sossaman Middle School as a new facility in the Higley Unified District in the fall of 2013. In its first years of school, Sossaman was recognized as the state's second highest academic performing middle school. Ms. Deb Scott is the force behind the school's success and strength as a STEM facility. She was instrumental in planning the facility and the programs that have made it so successful. She visited other districts and conferred with other administrators and STEM school leaders as the new school program was developed. She has hired all faculty and staff for the school and has also helped develop exceptional teacher leaders on her campus. All Sossaman students have one-to-one -one iPads assigned to them to use throughout their school day and take home each evening. Teachers work diligently to plan lessons and activities that take advantage of technology. 
parents are encouraged to get involved and are given resources to help with their students' success. They're, the students are performing exceptionally well in math and science, with many of them completing Algebra 1 and or Geometry prior to leaving eighth grade. All eighth graders at the school are enrolled in conceptual physics class, which blends science and mathematic concepts and engage students in daily hands-on activities. Engineering is explored through lab-focused instruction. During this class, students also learn basic chemistry concepts, including atomic structure, properties of matter, and chemical reactions. That's a lot. <laughs> Elective classes in the area of computer applications and robotics give students opportunities to learn and participate in engaging collaborative learning activities. Robotics students are involved in hands-on project-based activities utilizing VEX robots. The course focuses on problem-solving strategies in which students research, design, build, and program their robots to complete varied tasks. They also have an extensive world language program with large numbers of students taking first and second year Spanish, French, and Mandarin. The campus is warm and inviting, and Ms. Diab Scott is the ultimate cheerleader for all of its programs. Students have significant opportunities for leadership and involvement in clubs, activities, and athletics. The PTO is very active and works closely with Ms. Diab Scott to plan activities and neighborhood and community events. And it goes on and on, but I think you get the idea of all that she has going there. So um, I am very pleased at this time to present you the certificate, which tells what the award is. And then you get this wonderful, it's a good thing I like purple. Yes. <laughs> yes. And it contains some goodies and swag in there. Uh, one of the things inside there is a, a, a voucher for tickets to the February 18th Grand Canyon University basketball game, where the president will recognize the monthly winners with plaques at halftime on the court. So that'll be an exciting, yes, <laughs> see, sadly, sometimes when you say that to the younger girls, they go, who's that? Yeah. How can you not know who that is? I'm 26 forever. Yeah. <laughs> we all know who he is. And then as another wonderful surprise, Mr. Boots going to tell you about from Orcutt Winslow. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I don't think I need this. Can everybody hear me back there? Okay, thank you. Superintendent Thompson, uh, yes, thank you very much for giving us. If you would indulge me one minute. Um, I, I, this is the second month in our time, and I'm going to be called clean up here. <laughs> we'll figure out what that means in about five minutes. Or two minutes. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I wanted to do, I was impressed last month when we did this at Phoenix Union High School, and I'm impressed this month even more. I think you're honest with this. Um, this is wonderful. This is a major university. Get a card, right? Isn't that what you do? Birthdays, awards, etc. 
So I'm the cleanup hitter. Congratulations, it's a car. appreciate the generosity of Orcott Winslow. We, we all know that uh, schools don't have enough money, obviously. The nice thing about this, she doesn't have to get a purchase order approved to spend the money. <laughs> it's actually a visa card that she can use for anything for her science programs or things that the kids or the teachers might need. And so every penny we know is appreciated at the school level. Did you want to say anything? I'm actually at a loss of words, and if you know me, that's kind of shocking if you guys know me that I'm at a loss of words. I had no idea. I was, yeah, Dr. Thomason called today. I was like, just be here at 6.30, and I didn't know why. And thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I get to work with this fabulous lady with the state. We're on the same task force for uh, educator retention. So I get to see her, talk to her on a monthly basis, and I just want to say thank you. And thank you so much. I believe I actually have met you because I've been in this district since when you opened some of the schools. So thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the support of the community and all of my teachers because it really is my teachers and my kids that make our school so absolutely amazing. So thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Susie last name. It's been a week. Yeah, yeah, all in science. Yeah. It's the it's the free diet. I've lost I my teeth didn't hurt it was the school. Um President Whitener, members of the board, cabinet community. Um, the next presentation we have is a video from our Santan Elementary School um, showing the, the project of Leader and Me. So, IT, if you could start running that video.
A Leader in Me School is a whole school transformational process that incorporates leadership skills and life skills in the daily language on the campus, in the classroom and outside of the classroom. Santan Elementary was privileged enough to receive a five-year grant to support the efforts in professional development for staff members and for students to learn about the seven habits of highly effective people that is embedded within the curriculum and outside of the classroom. So when kiddos are in the hall or on the playground or the cafeteria, our hope is that they're using, using leadership skills to um, talk to their peers. The seven habits of highly effective people is a whole school transformational process in which students and staff members at Santan Elementary talk the language. And so that provides us common language on our campus so teachers and students can talk about being proactive. When a kindergarten student says, I'm going to be proactive and get this work done before I go out and play, that is a beautiful message that you can hear from a kindergarten kid, a five-year-old or six-year-old. And then when you hear a sixth grader talking about being proactive, I'm going to be proactive and do this rather than do this because I know that I have to begin with the end in mind. That is something that just gives chills to you because um, the language is being used in the classroom and outside the classroom. The leader in me was a process to start we started um, it as a book study with our staff and we really had conversation about could this work at Santana Elementary. We took a visit of a lighthouse school in another district. We brought the information back and sat down as a staff and talked about the purpose of the leader in me and could it work at Santana Elementary and we, we believe that it would be a transformational process. So we all agreed that we wanted to uh, apply for a grant for the Leader and Me, and we got approved in June. And so wonderful staff that I have, we decided that we would start with the three-day training over the summer. Teachers came over the summer for a three-day training and learned about the seven habits of highly effective people and so from there, that really started the process of, okay, how do we roll it out? What do we do on our campus to really show that we are a leader in me school? What we've used um, to show that we are a leader in me school as far as resources, with a grant it paid for posters that uh, are in every classroom. We revised our mission and vision statement to really reflect leadership on our campus. Every classroom has our new mission and vision statement in um, the classrooms and around the school. Every board has some sort of leadership quote or theme tied to leadership. Um, we have a lighthouse team of adults, there's about 10 adults that uh, meet every week after school to talk about our big rocks for the school year for supporting the leader in me. The ultimate goal of being a leader in me school is that every student and every staff member really internalizes the seven habits of highly effective people so that they are leaders of themselves and they are leaders of others as well. First you have to be a leader of yourself to make good choices so you can be a role model. Then you can be a leader of others. Thank you. Let's give a big round of applause to our principal at Santan Elementary, Ray Mercado. <laughs> Next, we have upcoming events. Oh, Dr. Thomason. Yes. Sorry. Santan. Um, I just wanted to thank you for, I mean, if you won the award in June, and I don't remember when I was there, if it was September or early October, and how much has already been incorporated. And um, is Mr. Mercado here? Oh, there you are. Well, you're not him, but um, but teachers, um, he took us on a little tour. I think it was on a PTO night, or it was a school event, and um, that already so much was already in the classrooms, and the walls, and the halls, and um, 
my, our family did the Leader in Me training this past summer, too, with the Army. And my little six-year-old was walking in the halls, and he's like, why is there synergize everywhere and sharpen the saw? Wow, why? You know, and he, he, he knew it all, and just how much those kids absorb those things um, at such a, you know, a fast rate. And I just wanted to congratulate you and for taking that on and, um, how much has already been implemented in such a short time. And I, I'm always time is of the essence and I'm, uh, thank you for doing that and for taking that, um, initiative. And I know it's something that a lot of our community asks for and seeks for when they're looking at schools is those, leadership opportunities and those leadership values. So thank you and congratulations. Upcoming events, President Whitener, members of the board, we have our winter break coming up from December 21st to January 3rd. Then we have our next governing board meeting on January 13th. And in between that time, we will schedule a board retreats so we can talk about some of the board goals and those upcoming uh, issues that we need to, to tackle. And then Wednesday, January um, 18th, we have our Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. And then our final board meeting for January will be on the 27th. Thank you. Opportunity for board comments. I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays and have a great break. Since we won't see you again, but um, hope you enjoy times with your families. Happy towel days as well, but I'd just like to share, went to um, Coronado for their turkey trot. And oh, yes. Well, although, and uh, Dr. Thomason went with me as well, and and Dr. Whitner went there as well with me on that. What an incredible event, huge community support on that. And I just want to tell you how important that day is and, and how your community comes together and how it continues throughout the day that all the artwork and things that your children did at that school continued on that evening for the decorations for over a thousand people, homeless people um, through the Chandler Boys and Girls Club and to see them walk in this room with all the decorations that your children did and the smile on their faces that was just one of those moments in life. So please thank your staff for, for what they have done and making a difference in the children's lives there. So thank you. President Whitener. I'm going to try and get through this without coughing. Um, I attended the Cooley Choir concert last night and the Higley High School band performance last night. It was really nice. This time of year is awesome when we get to go to all of these holiday concerts. I know we have lots going on, so um, I'm hoping to make it to as many as I can. Um, I do have on my calendar the Jingle Jog. So I have already told my staff I will be gone that morning. So um, I'm looking forward to that. That's a lot of fun. Thank you. 7.0 consent agenda items. Go ahead and move that we approve 7.1 through 7.7. .7. Support. Is there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 President Whitener. Dr. Nance. With your approval of the consent agenda, you have approved the transfer of Sherry Richards to become the new principal of Bridges Elementary School. I'd like to have Sherry stand and be recognized. Thank you. I just, I did want to read the gifts and donations. Um, for this month, we had 
um, donation to Power Ranch from Tracy Briggs, Darren Pascal to Power Ranch, Tudor Club of Gilbert to Power Ranch, H.G. Gilbert Pizza to Power Ranch, Wells Fargo Community to Centennial, Fred Coates to Higley High, Sarah Boyle to Chaparral, and Sarah Boyle to Chaparral. And I, I hope our home sites um, are um, thanking those donors in their own ways. Thank you very much. Eight point oh no business at this time. Nine point oh is action and information items. Nine point one is our monthly financial report for November. If any board members have any questions or comments, you can direct those to Ms. Deuce at this time. None. 9.2 is an information item. We have an update on the elementary early release Wednesdays. President Whitener, members of the board, last spring we had a group of teachers accompanied by principals Malon Wong and Liz Wolf presented to you a possibility which, which came true and they'd like to come back this evening with pretty much the same group and give you an update on the early release Wednesdays that our elementary schools have held since the beginning of the school year. And hopefully this information will help guide you as you move through the budgeting process here in the next few weeks. So I'm gonna ask Dr. Wong, Mrs. Wolf to come on up with your teachers. We have a slideshow presentation for you on early release Wednesdays. Ah, there it is. Good evening, Dr. President Whitener, Governing Board, Dr. Thomason and the Cabinet. Thank you, Higley Community, for being here tonight. Um, joining me is Liz Wolf, the principal of Chaparral. We represent the eight elementary school principals, as well as four amazing educators. So I'll let them each introduce themselves. Alexander, I teach fourth grade at Chaparral. And I'm Marin Cole, I teach sixth grade social studies at Centennial. We are thrilled to be able to come before you today and share with you the profile of one of the very best changes that we have experienced this year. Originally, we asked you, the governing board, to approve early release on Wednesday to provide needed time for professional development, professional learning communities, and for planning. Um, <clears throat> in response, you approved this governing board policy to address the request for one school year. You also requested a report on the effectiveness of this <coughs> practice. What we found out is, is that regardless of the budget constraints, we, this is quality planning time that has accelerated teacher effectiveness and the ability to meet the needs of each individual student with minimal com impact on the community. All eight principals report that they have not had one negative phone call concerning this initiative, which I think is amazing. <laughs> Tonight you will hear how powerful this time has become to the way of doing business to reach our students. So our purpose here this evening is to provide you um, pretty much with an update on what we've been doing the first six months of our school year since um, making this positive change. Um, and provide you some feedback not only from the teachers who are standing before you this evening, but a good chunk of our teachers from our K-6 uh, schools were surveyed uh, right before fall break. And that's a good part of what we'll be talking about and looking at this evening. 
one of the most important pieces that when our group got together, these four teachers and Dr. Wong and myself, after hearing from their particular schools, was we're very proud of the fact that um, Higley is really in a, in a wonderful spot of being recognized as a large district. Um, but we are also very flexible and agile. We're not so big that we're not able to make really um, positive and um, smart moves for students. And this has, pilot is one of them. So you have a copy in front of you of the questions to the survey and several of the responses. We had a, an, a wonderful response back from the teachers um, prior to fall break. Um, we had over 54 pages of free response comments and they were overwhelmingly positive. In fact, I brought the packet because it's so large to show you um, the comments that did come back from our teachers in our uh, K-6 schools. And I also wanted to highlight, these were not yes, no answers. Most of them were really passionate, long comments from teachers talking about how, what this time, the gift of time has done for them to impact their instruction um, and student learning in those classrooms. I also wanted to say that um, uh, last year was the first time that we had done uh, something uh, at, at Centennial where we have a Cafe PD. It's a wonderful event. I think some of you are familiar with it where we have oftentimes any, anywhere from 25 to 35 teachers from all of our K-6 schools present. And our teachers um, in those schools are able to then pick and choose through my learning plan what three sessions they're interested to go and learn about. What a wonderful thing that they get to choose on their own. As an administrator, I thought it was a great um, opportunity. When I talked with some of our teachers um, at the beginning or at the end of last year after doing this twice, they had said, yes, you know what, Liz, it's absolutely a wonderful opportunity, but you know what I would really like? I'd love some time to actually review and talk with my team members and implement some of the great things I've learned. And at our school, we have five teachers in every section. They're never together. It's impossible for, for large schools to have that time to plan together. That stuck with me. That was very much an imprint that my perspective, it was a wonderful opportunity, but they never have that time. They'll have to go on a Saturday or a Sunday to actually have time together or stay late after their workday ends. So we're excited to present uh, the rest of our presentation this evening and walk you through some, some good feedback. If you look at the campus responses, you can see that 100% of our campuses were represented. There were separate um, 242 respondents to this survey. And we had an incredible response of 81%. Um, you'd be lucky to get 30% most of the time in a survey that's sent out to especially teachers who are a little busy. Um, this represents our entire teacher population, general education, classroom teachers, special ed, specialists. Everyone was involved in this in the K-6 setting. Um, I wanted to point out also that we talked about this last time, self-contained cross-cat special ed teachers, they really don't ever get a prep time. Uh, they have meetings before and after school for IEPs, parent meetings, that kind of thing. And at this time, the Wednesdays, is when they get together. Um, in our situation, we have five teachers in our grade level. We don't get a prep that's in common, except for this Wednesday afternoon time. So this is extremely valuable to us. And this is what was reflected in the survey. Uh, we had specialists at all the different schools who are singletons, we're lone wolves, we're all the way, you know, we're five minutes away from the next person who teaches what we teach. And these Wednesdays give us the opportunity to get together and do PLCs that are content specific. Um, the next slide, if you can click for me, Milan. This is an overview. Um, this is one of the teacher comments that we just felt really reflected the overall sentiments of all the teacher responses. So I'm going to read it really quickly. Uh, early Wednesdays have been crucial to our grade level PLCs. We're able to collaborate, analyze data, plan our sessions, lessons at a much higher level. We all agree without reservation we've improved. How we function as a team, increase our productivity, expand our thinking, help team morale, analyze curriculum standards and best practices, positively impacting our students. It's an amazing gift to the school, enabling rigorous, higher level learning to take place. Thank you. 
So one of our district strategic, strategic anchors is to be student focused and this planning time on Wednesdays has allowed teachers time to develop instruction that reaches advanced students and really helps the struggling students. Personally, I have to say that this time has been an absolute blessing. Um, activities that I've always wanted to try but haven't been able to find the time to do, I've gotten to try out this year. Instead of doing a review packet to get ready for a test, we're doing scavenger hunts where I wouldn't have been able to do that in another year where I could make a map and create clues for the kids to be solving and working together in groups and really engaging their brains and going deeper into the curriculum. With more time freed up after school on other days, teachers can provide more extracurricular activities. So we have teachers running Girls on the Run. At Centennial, we had a National Geographic Club this quarter. Um, and so it really provides more opportunities for our students even outside of the school day. We are also able to provide tutoring after school since we have this extra time um, to plan. We're able to give up some of our time after school. At Centennial, our team provides after school tutoring for free three days a week for students who need extra help or who are stuck or just need that extra support. So it is really, it has meant a lot to all of us. Productivity for this time period has been fantastic. So if you look at our data, 88% of our teachers say that it has been consistently productive and with the 11% that say that it's usually productive, that's 99% of our teachers who are saying this time is being well spent. Our administrators have been extremely supportive with keeping this time as a sacred planning time. Um, it's provided an opportunity, as Ms. Witt said, for teachers who are departmentalized, such as myself, to meet with other teachers who teach social studies or who teach science and really be able to learn from each other and collaborate in a way that was virtually impossible before this year. Students push themselves and stay focused on Thursdays and Fridays because they've had that bit of a break on Wednesdays. And it's also an opportunity for teachers to sort of give that extra practice on Wednesdays and for students to come back fresh and finish out the week strong instead of losing energy by Friday. So Fridays remain quality days for all of us. So this is a quote from the survey that sort of sums up what we are trying to say, that early release days have helped our team come together in a positive way. We are no longer trying to fit in time after or before school in the midst of other meetings, appointments, life events, etc. We are more relaxed, better prepared, and overall better teachers. We have been able to meet with our specialists as well, and this helps us to reach our kiddos who are needing more help in certain academic areas. It is a no-brainer that we need to keep this, not only for our teachers, but most importantly, for our students. I have noticed that they work hard, knowing that Wednesday afternoon will be a bit of a break for them, then come back on Thursday knowing that they need to push themselves hard for two more days until the weekend. Another theme that um, was very apparent to us as we looked at the data was that teachers feel valued. Um, you gave us the gift of time, and in lean times when um, we may not be as competitive salary-wise with our surrounding districts. What you have offered the teachers is um, this gift of time to prep, plan, collaborate, work as a professional learning community, and be treated like the professionals that we are. Um, we think that's a really important factor in retaining quality teachers in our classroom. And so by having this gift of time to be able to be the professionals that we are, um, we are able to make very strong decisions about children and about curriculum. Um, and it's affecting ourselves as humans because we have more time at home with our families. And that makes us better prepared to be in the classroom for our children. Um, so this really supports this, the Higley strategic anchor of valuing people. And we really appreciate that. I wanted to say again, it really does have some great resources for us, and this is the first year that I feel like I can really implement those by knowing them. So we sit together as teams and talk through things and work those into our lessons, which have greatly impacted the students. And the next slide is about data analysis. The data drives all of our instruction, and we have to analyze the data before we even plan. So the Wednesdays gives us a great time to address each child and also support each other through helping the children the best we can. Um, I think one of the things we wanted to say about collaboration was, personally I can speak to this, that 
I collaborate and plan with my special ed teacher who, um, in a normal day where she services two to three grade levels, she could not come to my planning time um, and meet with me. And so we'd have to find time after school, which is very different, difficult when you serve on team leads and you have IEP meetings and things like that. I am able to plan with Mrs. Miles and she is able to actually, we are able to actually do real team teaching in the classroom. Um, and that's the first time that's happened and I've been in Higley for nine years. And so this time has made that collaboration piece critical and it's really impacting our children um, for the better, the betterment of, of their, what they need, so. And we can also pull in like literacy coaches, math coaches, because they know this is our PLC time so we can utilize them more effectively as well. And this is really the slide that sums it up. When we did the vote for how many teachers like the early release and how many teachers didn't, it was overwhelming, 97% to 3%. We just feel, they feel like it's more effective and the collaboration piece has just really helped us all be better teachers. <clears throat> We've talked about it a lot of times. I've, I'm very fortunate to have Ms. Cole on my team this year, and we don't get to see each other a lot during the day. Uh, we don't even have lunch together three days of the week just because of the way duty schedules and specials kind of fall. So this Wednesday has allowed us to collaborate, and for me particularly, that is really, really nice. I am sort of on my own a lot, and so it's wonderful to have somebody that we can talk and, and do things on Wednesday and we've got a Greek Olympics coming up next week that we're both super excited about because we have each other to work with. Um, finally, for some suggestions for future use, we just have to say that as teachers, we love this opportunity. Um, we've protected this time for planning. Administration does not direct us on what we have to do on those Wednesdays. These are things that we can act as professionals and make the choices that we need to be better instructors. We have time to work with district specialists. There's only so much time in a day for an instructional coach or the gifted specialist or the two librarians that we have left to come and collaborate with us. And these Wednesdays give us a little bit more play to have them come and work with us. Um, new teacher in services, I know, I remember that first year teaching, you felt like the world was coming down around your ears all the time. And I think those Wednesdays allow them to meet with their mentor teachers or somebody else on their team or somebody else in another part of the building that can tell them it's gonna be okay and that they can do a good job and here's how to do it and they can work together. Um, we have school-wide same group PLCs. We have district collaboration groups for different content areas. And we've been really, really happy um, with this time. Um, kind of a little bit of a conclusion on this for us. I'm sorry, I'm skipping you. Go ahead. No, we'll jump um, in. question number five for the teacher, for the people who took the survey dealt with um, the passage of the override funds and what did they want to see done with that. And it was overwhelmingly um, discovered that with, you know, 93% of the teachers surveyed wanted to keep early release days in lieu of having five specials. Um, and so, the team um, has decided that you know these are very valuable um, days, and that the board should consider making this a, a way that we do business at the elementary level. That we are recommending that this is just how we operate in our K six system with having this time for our teachers. Keeping on with that idea, it works well for us. We're very productive. We're not interfering with student learning by doing this. In fact, we believe that we are enhancing that student learning. Um, we think that this was a good decision last year. We think this is a good decision moving forward, and we value this time. We value this opportunity that you've given us to, to have this professional development time, and we're just asking that you send this message that you value our professional teaching skills and our time as well, and making this a permanent part of the Higley calendar. Um, the whole system is kind of focused on excellence for every child, and this enables us to do that in a better way. I'm, going to, I'm the reader tonight. I get all the long quotes, so here I go. So here's a quote that we really enjoyed. We've been able to dig deeper into the curriculum maps to ensure that each standard is being taught and have been able to share multiple ideas for teaching to different types of learners. We've worked together as a team to develop communication tools for our data notebooks, making the students more involved and responsible for their learning. We've worked together to share ideas and strategies to support our lowest 25% and boost our higher kids to new levels. We've been able to enhance our knowledge for the growth mindset and brainstorm strategies to instill this thinking in students. We've worked to create goals and measure progress for the struggling students who are being sent to the Intervention Planning Team, or IPT. 
We've been able to spend extra time planning together when our minds are still fresh and not fried after school. It really does make a difference. I hope you see that tonight that uh, this initiative really does pull together the value system of our district and we hope that you'll consider that for the future. Um, if there are any questions, we're here. First, I'd like to start. I'd like to thank the committee members in reference to this because this is a um, this is a wonderful, wonderful program. Um, I hear nothing but positive from the community, the parents, and everything. So, uh, for us to move forward, we need to have the meetings. Um, what I applaud you for as well is reference to the specials. We're having the opportunity to meet with other specials from other schools. So we're having the district-wide connection, which we never had that opportunity. So that's that's a great opportunity for us on that. As you mentioned, it's teacher retention too as well. And, and it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, personal note, I work at a college. And on Friday afternoons, we are closed for staff development. And we have been doing this for years, every Friday, for every week. So I know how important that is from a personal standpoint for us to move to the next level in reference to that. So I, I just have one question in reference to the, the survey. I mentioned uh, the question was in lieu of specials, of the fifth special. I didn't know that was a conversation that even was taking place. Two years ago, we had, by, you know, back in 2009, we actually had five specials sure. throughout the, the week, mm -hmm. and that was five planning periods for myself mm -hmm. as a teacher, and we have really decreased that. And so question number five asks, with the passage of the override election, would you rather see additional funding used toward the addition of special area teachers to ensure five days of specials each week, or keep the early release Wednesdays and allocate the funding to other purposes, such as reducing class size, salary increases, etc.? Mm -hmm. And overwhelmingly, teachers responded, we, love, we value this time, we, we collaborate and, and therefore, you know, if we could use that funding and not allocate it towards that. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just refresh my memory, we have four day, four specials presently or three? What do we have? We have three. Three, 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 three. 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 Can we have some discussion perhaps later in reference to continuing the specials that we have had instead of making that decision that we have to eliminate specials? you know to accommodate this because this is a wonderful program guys it's a wonderful program okay but i'd like to see us continue with the specials as well is there some way we can have that discussion not that we have to make a decision uh, either or here just let's have everything and one of the things we want to bring up is that we would like to you to consider this as a way of doing business that our employees our teachers are hard working and they are very dedicated and they want to keep us at the top um, in achievement. In order to do that, they need to have time to work as, as a team to collaborate. I don't see that there is a budget impact, no matter what you decide to do about specials, that this time is valuable separate from that issue. Um, one question regarding the Kids Club. Does that um, entail more staffing? Do we just have enough staffing already that the numbers are so low? So if those numbers increase in January because that dollar amount makes a difference? President Whitener, members of the board, we took a look at the staffing um, for the early release Wednesdays. At the beginning of the year, we had it set at $20 per child for the Wednesday afternoons. The impact to the Kids Club after school program has been less than we had anticipated. And so at this time, we do have the capacity to add more children at a, at a lesser cost, which would not increase the cost of the district for staffing. And do we have a plan to communicate that out to, we do. to the community that, I mean, maybe the dollar difference will make? Absolutely, um, we do. And we also um, plan on adding more programs. Currently, we have 18 programs at seven of our schools, and we're working with community education to make sure we add more programs on Wednesdays. Um, Mr. Wodovich uh, sent me a copy of some opportunities that we may take a look at and move forward with in the future. Thank you. I did want to say we have that packet. It was hand delivered. Yes. It was conditional. <laughs> but we, you know, I, I, I probably can assume that most board members did read, or all of us did read, at least some of those 54 pages. We read them. And babies played with them as well, but they were read. I'd just like to say thank you, thank you again, and this is a much needed program. So thank you. Well, I would just like to add, so 
um, you know, whenever you do sort of a collaborative kind of program, there's clearly early benefits here, greater cohesion. I, I've seen you take and leverage, you leverage the time to be multidisciplinary, which is great. Um, it's refreshed the enthusiasm for you as educators, which is great, right? It does align with one of the board goals of better retru recruitment and retention. Um, you know, the additional one-on-one -on -one student attention for certain students is fantastic. I would just only suggest maybe that these are, this is early collaboration and there may be more that we could do. So something to think about would be, and, and maybe this is a question you might be already doing it, are you having the grade levels of each of the schools meet, to get, meet together as a district? Or are you having subjects meet together as a district instead of just each of the individual schools? And <clears throat> So that's a greater opportunity for that cross-pollination, early benefit of collaboration. But to really leverage collaboration, collaboration produces something. And you've really done some great work in integrating some of that into uh, the curriculum, talking about changing some of those standards. So it would be really great to see what those changes were. Um, and I might recommend that each grade level or however these pods are put together, whatever, I don't know what they're called, but however you put these groups together that, you know, the grade level or the subject uh, group of, of, you know, let's say it's social studies or physics, that they meet together as a district, picking one of those, you know, maybe every other month, uh, every month might be too frequent, to meet together as a district, and you have someone in that group become you know, they take a lead role and planning an agenda for that group where you really come together and say, these are some objectives we would like to meet as this group. Consider multidisciplinary membership when you look at different subjects. And then as you meet those objectives, say it's we want to change a standard or, or this is an evidence-based approach to teaching this subject and then looking at practice-based evidence. So... What is it that you're doing in addition to what's great? And it's actually an opportunity for Higley to say, okay, we've done this great thing. It's better than what's already out there. It's an opportunity for some of these teachers to even, you know, publish and write. So it's a full cycle of collaboration. So collaboration is more than people meeting in a room and talking. Collaboration must produce something to fully leverage it. So just think about how that might be implemented here then we'd really see the next level of collaboration and really see the benefits of collaboration. Yes. On to that. <laughs> you want to be excused? <laughs> no, I'm like. But great work, great job. I'm, this I'm is I'm glad wonderful. to hear that you're, you're trying to um, give us some new ideas about how to collaborate with it, and I think that those are awesome suggestions. I think one of the things in our early implementation here is that when we were looked at the board policy, it limited us to one formal professional development period a month. And so we tried very hard to not dictate that at a, a formal level, but we would like to have more flexibility to explore some new options like you've mentioned tonight. So we have talked about can we get all the, the fifth grade teachers together and can we integrate? And we're like, well, we don't want it to look too much like formal professional development, but maybe we could, you know, facilitate some of these discussions. And I love the idea that it goes back to how are we changing achievement in the classroom? Because otherwise it's like, you know, nice time to chat with each other and relax and maybe up the, the ante with our lessons and things like that because I know it, even in the art area they come together and they they each bring a lesson to share and so it gets critiqued by everybody and so when there's a great lesson then that just multiplies that that level of excellence across the board so that's the kind of informal collaboration formal collaboration that we do want to uh, continue to support and this is actually very great, and it's, it's kind of the early stages of very strong collaboration. It's very wonderful to see. It's just a suggestion of, um, you know, this is what I do for a living, actually. So, <laughs> so except it's just with physicians and changing medical practice. 
We can we talk all day about this. Yeah. They're like, we, we just went on and on. I'm like, hey, time out, teachers. Why don't you go home now? Because it's like 6 o'clock, you know. But they are passionate about this time and how crucial it is for us to up the ante and to pursue the excellence that we know that our, our school district can achieve. Right. I think Cindy wants to say So it's that. a suggestion. So what, the, what we've achieved here is known as the Hawthorne Effect. And so it's just going beyond the Hawthorne Effect, and that's really what cements collaboration. So, you know, when you put a plant in the ground and, it, and, and a bud starts to, to blossom, it takes a long time for it to grow sometimes. But you've planted something within our K-6 teachers, and it is taking bloom. And what you've mentioned with being able to get together, as teachers, we've taken that on naturally ourselves, sitting within our curriculum lead meetings for fourth grade, Jen Hawks, Jen Kramer, myself have all got together and said, we need to have this conversation with fourth grade across the district. We need to be meeting. We need to be having that time together to talk about what did you do at Centennial because you guys really rocked this standard. How do we get there? Or let's look at this data piece. That has started to already blossom on its own because we've been given the gift of time and the professional um, responsibility to take this on ourselves. And I think with more time, it will just continue to bloom. And I love the idea of going even further and documenting that and putting that out there for other districts to see, but you have started something. So we're just passionate about having it continue um, and not having it go away. Thank you. I also wanted to share that we decided as a team and we actually um, talked about possibly bringing more documentation for you. Um, our schools are very passionate specifically about not only discussing uh, you know, how this affects us, but also showcasing um, the data on exactly what they're doing during these particular time periods and exactly how it's impacting student learning on our campuses. We knew our presentation was going to be a little longer. You already had a lot of information, but we have plenty to show you that document specifically what's happening during those times. I'll also share that we talked a little bit about as administrators, you know, you would think possibly on a Wednesday. Uh, that the parking lot might be empty. It's not. And really that's because they've had the opportunity to get together and decide um, instructionally what's best for their particular group of students and their grade level and have ownership of those pieces. And that's an important part as well. Um, so it's, it's by far one of the best things we've seen happen over my time being in this district. And we're excited to present that to you this evening. But we have plenty more if you'd like to see it. We'll just, we'll just, I'm sold. I'm sold. Yeah, is, is middle school knocking on the door? <laughs> no, we appreciate the time you put into that. I, I have been a, what I call a singlet teacher. I was in a K-8 and I was the only science teacher and maybe three times a year did I get to even talk to another science teacher. Um, so I understand those pieces and, um, you know, and, and as board members, we hear all sides. Um, you know, I know you said, well, we haven't had any complaints for parents. Well, yes, we get them. Um, so at least they're being nice to you guys. But, um, you know, so it's, it's taking different things into, into different perspectives. And, and I'm not saying one is, you know, an over majority or another. But, um, you know, and as board members, we do hear all sides. And, um, but I, I do know I, I have, you know, can see and, and felt um, the, the, um, oh, I was thinking of that word, when you reach equilibrium, equi equi equilibration on your chemical litmus or um, s stimulus, and, um, and you hope that it continues through and that it, it does reach um, different levels for the benefit of the students and the teachers. And I think with time, too, um, it'll be a win-win for teachers and, and students. So thank you for preparing all that. And um, we appreciate all that you've done. Thank you. Dr. Thomason, we are on 9.3. Yes, uh, President Whitener, members of the board, I would like to welcome up the ever entertaining and incredibly knowledgeable Dr. Anna McCauley. I thought they were all here for me. 
No, don't, 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 leave, don't leave. Don't leave. She's just starting. Trust me. She's just starting. <laughs> well, that's a shot to the ego. <laughs> I kid, it's not about me, but good evening again, President Whitener, members of the board, cabinet members, audience. Um, here it is, it's here. District-wide, as you can see, we outperform the state by pretty wide margins. Uh, notice in the, the lower grades, those margins are wider. Let's remember the younger kids have gotten more common core or uh, a, a, what's now termed Arizona academic standards. Uh, that was more incremental in approach. And so the older kids have a lot more gaps to fill. So you see the high school or the higher the grade goes, the scores go down, but also our, our uh, margin narrows. But there's also a lot fewer passing at the state level at that. So to, to say if you only have 20 or 30 percent, to think we're going to have 80% of our kids be in that 30% is almost ludicrous. So, but overall, we did very well, um, comparatively speaking. If you look on um, the next page here, we have our East Valley neighbors listed with us by grade level at the district level. And as you can see, you know, in some grade levels and content areas, we had the highest percent passing and sometimes one of our neighbors did. It, it, it's kind of like that even statewide. If you look at different schools in the state, you'll see uh, this school did really well in this grade level, but this grade level, uh, something was missing. And that, that's very standard. We both, uh, uh, Dr. Nance and I had noticed some of those things when we were first looking through some of the data. Um, so where were we the strongest in the East Valley? We were in our early, in our uh, elementary grade levels. You can see in ELA, we had uh, third grade, fourth grade, uh, fifth grade, and then tied in sixth grade for having the, the most students pass of our neighbors. Um, and then in math, uh, we did in uh, fifth grade. When we get to the middle and high school grades, we were highest in seventh grade ELA, and um, I think there was one other, oh, Algebra One. Algebra One, our middle school students. Can you hear me? Oh, turn the slide, not the volume, sorry. Oh yeah, I'm so sorry, I, I went to the next page. I have it right here. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Now you can all see that I'm talking about. Uh, just wanted to point out our middle school um, eighth graders taking algebra really hit it out of the park. So we had some very high pass rates at our middle schools in uh, algebra and geometry. Um, again, high school you'll see statewide everything, uh, even our neighbors went a little lower. We were very curious to know, did it? change or was it that back one where Queen, our, our neighbor Queen Creek did really well. It was fourth grade math. They had a, a 70 percent and uh, we were grade. 68. Sixth they were grade, yeah. just uh, slightly above us, but we were real proud of our neighbor there. We work with them pretty closely. So, Oop. I'm going to turn this now over to Dr. Nance to, where did it go? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Forwards, okay. backwards. I think I had it upside down. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. McCauley. The last chart on there, we really debated whether we wanted to put that up there or not. It's a district ranking chart, and I just want to caution everyone that rankings mean very, very little this year. And the reason is all we have are passing percentages. There's nothing in there about student growth. There's nothing in there about any kind of other student data, graduation rates, any of that. It's strictly a passing percentage. And if you were to look at the districts in the rank order of districts from the highest passing percentages down to the lowest, you know what it really is? It's a very close correlation to socioeconomic levels of the community. It really doesn't mean a whole lot in terms of 
which school or which school district is being more successful with their students. We don't have that information at this point. So what you have in front of you is the district rankings of language arts and math with the neighbors that Dr. McCullough just shared with you. And there's a difference between whether or not you're looking at just unified districts or all districts in the state. All districts also include some elementary districts who scored better than the high school districts and scored better than unified districts. There are some very small districts in there, larger districts in there. When you look at all districts, Higley was the eighth highest in language arts and the ninth highest in math in terms of passing percentages of students. When you looked at unified districts, we were number four in math and number five in language arts in terms of passing percentages of students. And I just once again want to caution you not to use this information for any more than what it really is. You, there are organizations out there now, and I've seen comparisons where they have rank ordered schools and school districts among across the state. You have to separate your language arts and math scores. Some of these organizations are throwing them together and then rank ordering schools and school districts. You can't statistically even do that. It's not mathematically possible to even do that. So people are misleading the public in terms of these rank orders that you see out there. So anyway, we did really well. We did really well compared to the state, compared to our neighbors, compared to everyone else in terms of passing percentages. Dr. McCauley is now looking at the other thing. She's digging deeper. She's working with principals and finding like schools with socioeconomic levels and uh, makeup of their school populations. And so we're going to have a lot more data for schools to, to use and move forward with. The disappointing piece this year is the state gave us much less information than they have ever given us in the past. This is all we've got. Anything else we want to glean for, from this, Dr. McCauley is doing behind her computer in her little office. So she's very busy, and I know she's starting to meet with schools now and, and sharing some of the deeper information with them. But we did really well. And, and, and I, to, just to put it into perspective, just before I came in here, I just ran a little analysis. And um, we had a school that had an 80% pass rate in one grade level and in a content area. And just so you know, that only 5% of the schools in the state actually could say they had 80% or better in a grade level or content area. So, and I can see from where I kind of put everybody in a range, we're probably about a standard deviation and a half to two standard deviations above what the state mean is, possibly, but again, we don't know enough. And what does it mean anyway if it's just a pass rate? It really is a measure of your demographics um, when you don't have growth in there too, to paint a complete picture. Because there are no growth rates associated. Will they, so next year, will there be growth mm -hmm. points? The state will be publishing growth. I don't want you to think that we're, we were misleading you. They're gonna still run an SGP um, from Ames to this just in this pilot year because they have to. <laughs> it was part of the waiver. So, um, and well, who knows what's gonna happen after reauthorization. They may not have to do that after all. So. And, and we're a little leery of running growth rates between two different tests yeah. that have nothing to do with each other. Sure. So yep. I, I think we need to be careful with, with that yeah. information as well. Yeah, it's not gonna be used. We've very made a, a, a conscious decision to not compare aims to, to this. This is a higher rigor. Um, yeah, I don't see how you could do that. Yeah. So, I mean, is, but next year, so the second year of AZ Merit, they will have a growth component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have an SGP moving forward. Right. And I think we'll do great in that too. Thank you. Is that it? I've heard some of our students say, just another test, let's move on with our day. <laughs>
But that, that's what I love about with some of our, um, well, I, a lot of our community, and we hear it from students and teachers, and it's just another test. And the kids, they're there to learn, and they're excited about learning. And, I mean, the kids, I don't know. But they don't seem to necessarily care. <laughs> but, um, you know, their, their scores or whatnot. Um, so at the end of the day, we just want to make sure our kids are enjoying learning and, and having a happy day. So thank you to those all who who continue to make that happen. 9.4 is to approve the 2015-2016 pay for performance plan. According to ARS.15-977, a school district governing board must adopt a performance-based compensation system at a public hearing to allocate funding from the classroom site fund. This is our Prop 301 dollars. The district meet and confer team met in, from September to November to create the performance pay plan. I move that the governing board approve the attached 1516 pay for performance plan. It says it's presented. Was anyone presenting anything or any questions or comments? President Weiner. Mr. Little. <clears throat> Have the performance evaluations taken place or that will happen later this year? How do we know where teachers will fall and how does that impact the budget? President Whitener, Mr. Little, um, it actually is a plan that expands the school year. So the evaluation part portion is the summative evaluation, which, which happens at the very end of the school year with teachers after the two formals and two informals. Um, so the data from the summative teacher performance is used and then we'll also be using test score data but we know we won't have that back this year we didn't get it back till october or something november so we will have it earlier next year but um not before the school year is out so the second portion of this plan will be allocated to teachers our goal is by the end of august next year once dr mccauley has the data and can disaggregate it to get it to us to see who qualifies okay. thank you any other questions all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Nine point five. We have a second read for policy or new regulation JC R. Amendments of policy JK and repeal regulation JK RB, the use of the restraints and seclusion. I'll go ahead and move that we approve new regulation JIC R. Is there any questions or comments? Sorry, now any questions or comments? <laughs> no. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 9.6 is also a second read and approved amended policy DN and new regulation DN-R for property disposition. Is there any questions or comments? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Nine point seven is a second read. Policy IHBCA and regulation IHBCA R regarding pregnant students. I move that we adopt policy IHBCA and regulation IHBCA R. Second. Any questions or comments? <coughs> so it's a change by the statute of the Department of Education regulation. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> 9.8. Approval of invoices from prior year. Um, we see there are five invoices 
that are brought back for approval for various reasons. So any questions or comments on those? Ms. Deuce, I do have one question. Do we have to do any revisions to any prior budgets? No. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 10.0 is future agenda items. We have our um, our board session with uh, survey results. Mr. Rotovich, you had mentioned um, some work studies. I'll just ensure that Dr. Nance is aware of those and remember from our minutes from the work study. Any others at this time? 11.0, I move that we adjourn. Second. Thank you. All's in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Signing off. <laughs>